Are you through hiking the Appalachian Trail in 2023? If so, I've got eight things that you must do on the trail that you don't want to miss out on. Number one, get your photo taken at McAfee Knob. McAfee Knob in Virginia is the most photographed place on the entire Appalachian Trail. It's even better if you get up and get your photo at sunrise. And just on the topic of photos, I would just say like, while everyone wants to live in the moment, obviously, and not be fiddling with your phone and your camera and all that, you're really gonna want photos to look back on when you're done with your journey. So just make sure that in the special moments, you are taking a moment to just get a photo real quick, whether it's something, you know, glorious and beautiful like McAfee Knob, or if it's your trail family, or a really cool friend you've met along the way. Just make sure you're taking a little bit of time out of your day to get photos because you're gonna want the memories when it's all over. It's gonna go by in a blur so fast and trust me, you will want these things in the future. So just take a moment to take a little photograph. Number two, this is gonna be controversial, but take the Gulf Haggis side trail in, in the 100 mile wilderness in Maine. I say it's controversial because nobody wants to do off trail miles. If it's not part of the AT, people are gonna be like, nah, I don't wanna do any extra miles for that. But here's the thing, this trail of any of the side trails is so worth it. It's so spectacularly beautiful. There are waterfalls everywhere. It's where I got what I consider possibly the most beautiful photo on my entire AT journey. It's just really worth it. Even if you just take the side trail for a mile or two, you will get so much incredible beauty. Like I just can't recommend it enough, especially because when is the next time you're gonna be in the 100 mile wilderness? And I feel like for the northbounders especially, they're going to be like, nah, I'm so close to Katahdin, and I'm just going to go for it. No, guys, no, take a moment. Go check out this side trail. It's so worth it. I promise you, you will not regret it. Number three, attend the pancake breakfast at the First Baptist Church in Franklin, North Carolina. Even if you're not religious, it's totally worth it. All the pancakes you can eat, all the bacon you can eat. I'm a vegetarian, I don't eat bacon, but I know many of you do. And I know a lot of my trail friends were constantly talking about bacon on the trail. It, the religion part is definitely not in your face. Um, the church has been putting on these breakfasts to, since 2008. You can just tell that they get a lot of joy from doing it. They'll send shuttles to all the hotels around Franklin and hostels around Franklin to pick up hikers and shuttle them to the breakfast. They make it very, very easy for you. And they'll even take your photo and let you send a photo and your letter home to your family or whoever you'd like. It's just really worthwhile. They're just really genuinely kind people. They clearly love helping hikers along their journeys. And I promise you the religion is not in your face. So I would really recommend stopping there. And just on this same kind of topic, like as an AT through hiker, the community along the AT is amazing. And you're gonna get so many people along your way who want to help you and give to you and contribute to your journey in a positive way. So I would just say to be open to that, be grateful for that, express gratitude for all of the kind things that people are gonna do for you because you will be the bearer of such kindness and generosity. So just be open to that and show gratitude for that. Number four, attend trail days. If you watch my videos, you know that I have mixed feelings generally about trail days. Trail days takes place in Damascus, Virginia in around mid-May every year. And a bunch of the hiker community comes down to Damascus, former through hikers, trail angels, YouTubers, gear companies, all the places. They'll come down to Damascus and have a big party and celebrate hikers in a bunch of different ways. And I have mixed feelings about my trail days experience because the weather was terrible. It poured basically the whole time I was there and the locals in Damascus have said that happens every year and also just my behavior at trail days like i was drinking too much i was not taking advantage enough of all the things going on but it it is a really nice place if you are a through hiker to go get a lot of support 
You can get free rides, you can get free showers, you can get free meals, and the community is just coming together to celebrate both the AT and the through hikers of that year. And I think that it's a really nice gesture and experience, and I think the people of Damascus really go out all out to help hikers. So I just think that it is worth going to one time. And also a lot of the gear companies will come and repair your gear for free. And they'll also do run gear giveaways. So if you have anything going on with your gear or something like that, it's also a really nice place to not have to ship gear out somewhere to get fixed or not just like slap some duct tape on it and call it a day, but actually like go get it repaired before say a bigger problem arises. So I do think trail days is worth going to one time while you're a through hiker. Will I ever go back? Eh, probably not, maybe. I mean, I could surprise myself. I could land there at some point. I do love Damascus, Virginia. It was probably my favorite trail town in the AT. So, you know, maybe I'll find myself there again sometime, but just one time is worth it, I think. Number five, I also put this in my video about different activities you can do on the AT besides uh, hiking. So if you're interested in more of those, go check out that video, I'll put it up there. But this one is river tubing. There are several places along the AT that you can go river tubing. Um, a couple of the most popular pl places are Front Royal, Virginia and Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. I went in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. Before I was on the AT, I'd been living in Washington, DC and Harpers Ferry is only about an hour and a half drive from DC. So my friends and I would go up every summer to Harpers Ferry and go river tubing. So when I hiked by there or hiked through there on the AT, I told my family, I was like, I really, really want to go river tubing once we get to once we get to Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. And so once we got to West Virginia, we did go river tubing and it was glorious. I mean, there are different companies that you can go through that will rent out tubes to you. Some will rent out floating coolers, life jackets, all the good stuff. It's a phenomenal way to take a rest day, especially because the mid-Atlantic tends to be pretty darn hot. So it's just a really nice respite to be out on the river, floating, jumping in the river all day long. It's really relaxing, it's really fun, and I just have really nice memories of doing it with my tramley. So I would also really recommend that you do it while you're on the trail. Number six, try some of the forest cuisine. And by that, I mean, try some of the natural foods that are out on the trail because they are, there are plenty of them. Obviously, don't eat anything unless you are absolutely certain of what it is and you are certain it's not going to harm you. But there are so many edible foods along the AT and I just think it really adds to the experience to be able to sample some of those. So by that, I mean, there are a bunch of different kinds of berries like wild strawberries and blueberries and raspberries and blackberries and wine berries and cranberries. There are a bunch of edible wild mushrooms out there. These ones especially be careful with because we all know that eating the wrong kind of mushroom could be very detrimental to your health. So make sure you know what you're doing. I was lucky enough to hike with two mushroomers out on the AT. So I was able to try a bunch of different mushrooms, but there are a bunch of different varieties that you can eat like morels, chicken of the woods, black trumpet, chanterelles, lobster mushroom, lion's mane, all kinds of good stuff. Obviously be respectful of the forest. You know, if you're gonna take some of the foods, make sure you're doing it in the most sustainable way possible, but it's really fun to try different stuff. There are also wild ramps out there, which in Western New York, we like to call wild leeks. Those are probably the earliest plants that you can eat. They uh, pop up pretty early on in the spring down south. So ate a lot of ramps, ate a lot of mushrooms, ate a lot of berries, and it was just, it was awesome. So I would recommend if you get the opportunity to safely do it, you try that as well. Number seven, I also mentioned this one in my AT favorites video, which I'll link below as well. But if you stay at any one hostel on the entire AT, I would go ahead and stay at Woods Hole Hostel near Parisburg, Virginia. Woods Hole is a family owned working farm that's also been turned into a, host a hostel and a bed and breakfast. The owner Neville is totally awesome. It's just a really nice atmosphere. It's beautiful. It's a farm out in the country. The scenery is gorgeous. The beds are really comfortable. The showers are really hot and really nice. As soon as you get there, you can buy a smoothie. You can get a vegan variety smoothie if you want. The other kinds have ice cream in them. 
You can pay for family style meals, which you'll then help cook. Sometimes they have yoga classes. They're just very into mindfulness and gratitude and, you know, just being happy with the place that you are and enjoying and appreciating the place that you are. And it's just oh, such a nice environment. I would love to go back to Woods Hole sometime. So if there's any one hostel or hotel or B&B or whatever that you stay at, stay at along the way, I would highly, highly recommend Woods Hole. And number eight, stop and swim in all of the lakes and ponds, especially in Vermont and in Maine. Just, first of all, I love swimming. So obviously this has to be on the list. Second of all, there are just so many gorgeous ponds and lakes and things, especially like way up in the Northeast. And I just think like you shouldn't be so in like your brain shouldn't be so focused on pushing miles, pushing miles, pushing miles that you don't stop to appreciate your freedom and the beauty around you and just have fun and be free while you can from society and work and you know all the things and I think a good way to do that is to stop and swim in all the places at least all the places once it gets warm out maybe maybe not if you're you know maybe not way down south if you're starting in like March or April <laughs> unless you're into polar plunges but along a lot of the trail you will have some pretty decent swimming opportunities so I would recommend you stop and take those opportunities so that's it. That's my list of eight things that you must do on the AT this year. If you are hiking the AT this year, let me know down in the comments. If you have hiked the AT in the past and you want to add anything to this list, let me know that in the comments. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe for more hiking and backpacking and outdoor content. I've got a lot of exciting hikes coming up this year, including the John Muir Trail. So if you're interested in that, definitely make sure that you subscribe. And if you could take a moment to smash that like button, I would really appreciate it. It helps on my channel. Thank you all so much for being here and I'll talk to y'all later.